Hey, greetings everybody. This is Brother Chris. Y'all see what my shirt say? Jesus is here to save you. We were actually in uh, Virginia, on Virginia Beach. It's called. It was called Deliverance in the Water 2023. We was uh, out there in front of all the people on that beautiful beach. I mean, it was nice. I never saw that much uh, water like that. Hi, hi, Don. I see you're watching. Don, what was the name of that ocean? The what ocean was that? Atlantic. Yeah, it was the Atlantic Ocean. We were on the the boardwalk on the Atlantic Ocean. I mean, we saw like a barge out there, uh, a ship carrying, you know, all those. Containers and it, it 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 almost the water looked like it just would drop off like it was so it was a straight line it looked like you can go out there and just drop off <laughs> it was wow I mean it, it had some clouds in the sky there were horses on the beach inside of a fence you know on the sand I don't know what they were doing that day, but it, it was just good to see them horses. It was people out there everywhere just enjoying themselves and relaxing. And it was just amazing how the Spirit of God just came there with us. Some people, they actually said as if it was uh, a glory cloud. They said in the photograph that was taken it, it was a glory cloud in the photo and praise God all I know is I did feel the presence of the Lord I did feel his presence and I was like Lord just have your way I, I tend to not focus in on a person unless the Lord draw me into a certain person because they got a piece got a word for them or something but I just knew the presence of God was there. And the people, they didn't leave. You know, they didn't, we didn't spoil their fun. It, you know, I seen, I, I saw some videos on social media where uh, ministers would be preaching the gospel out on a beach in front of all these people. And some people would be actually vexed. They would get up and go and they'll be like, ugh this again but it's like the people they wanted it they enjoyed it one lady came up to us and said she said i've been praying for this i've been praying for this to happen and and and, and it's it's happening finally and i i even asked her i said hey come and join us you're a believer right and she was like yeah i said you you know come join us you got a song you want to sing on the microphone and she she did she pulled up her phone and and pulled up the words to the song as the music was playing and she and and i was helping her out i heard that song before but i never you know practiced it or anything but as i when i got the chorus i started singing along with her but it was a nice time again this is the shirt that miss april marie uh ministries uh, she uh, gave us all our shirts. It was called Deliverance in the Water 2023. It was nice. Uh, it was funny. The shirt I was given, it was real tiny. It was, <laughs> it was really tight on me, but I, I'm glad I had like this, this smaller thing to put under it with sleeves on it. I hope nobody was like focusing in on that, but long as, you know, I was showing... You know, Jesus is here to save you. You know, some people I met in the elevator from the the uh, the apartment we were staying in. The Lord blessed us with an apartment, saved us some money. You know, thanks to everybody that helped us. I don't want to leave out any names, but you know, one guy I met him on the elevator with his friend. And he saw me with the wagon. I was pulling the equipment. And he and I said, yeah, man. I said, you guys come and join us out on the boardwalk. 
you know, we're, we're going to be talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, da, da, da. and he said, is Jesus going to be there? You know, sarcastically, he said, is Jesus going to be there? And I said, his spirit will be. And he, he didn't know what to say to me after that. I was waiting, you know, the elevator ride was kind of quiet after that, you know. But I, I was like hoping those guys would have showed up. But uh, today is the 8th of June, 2023, as promised. This is a live call-in. Phone lines are open. Give us a call, 270-505-9520. The good Lord put this on me and my wife's heart to start doing we are here to help you. We are here to help our brethren, those who are believers. And say you, you're you not a believer and you have a few questions. I had some people ask me questions. They said, I'm just, I'm not a believer. I don't believe what you believe, but I got a few questions and I, I answered them for them. And they, they said, your Bible contradicts itself. It says this and this, and then the answer the Lord gave to them, they were satisfied with it. They was like, oh, wow. And then I told them, I said, hey, like I tell everybody, the Lord Jesus said, our Lord and Master, Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, the Nazarene said, you have to be born again to understand his word. He said, I, I got to heal you. You know, I'm going to turn to that later. The Lord says you can be hearing with your ears, but not really getting it. You you can be seeing it with your eyes, but you not. You just won't get it. You must be healed by him. You must be. He said you. it's imperative that you be born again. And it's imperative that believers receive his Holy Spirit in their lives. Like, as of now, I'm not going to continue no further without uh, addressing my friend, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You are welcome, Holy Spirit, into this studio with me. I will always tell the people about you. Lord, you're that spirit. You're the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Father, Abba, Father. Yahweh, Most High, my Heavenly Daddy, Abba, you're the Holy Spirit. You said you will come. You said we will come and make our stay with you. Welcome into this studio. Welcome into this house, Lord. Welcome. I pray others will welcome you, Lord. And if you don't show up, I pray you show them why you you are that kind, Holy Spirit. You are that kind to show them. Get rid of that thing right there, and I will come in there. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit and the holy angels that stand by, that hearkens to the voice of your word, Lord God. You said, put you in remembrance of what you said and declare it that we may be justified. Lord, Father, bring your word to our, our, our understanding, our remembrance, the forefront of our spiritual mind. Let the carnal mind be nowhere. Let it be dead because we are dead. I know the carnal mind's dead, Father, because we're dead. You say you are dead and your life is hidden in my son, Christ Jesus, Lord uh, Yeshua, in me. That's what your word tells us. You cannot lie, nor will you lie to us. We have your word on it. Bless you for that, Father. Thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made for us to rejoice and be glad in it, Father. You are holy. Your name is holy. We represent your name. You said, be holy, be set apart. Father, I pray everyone at the, hearing this message will 
push away things right now as they're hearing it, knowing I got to be set apart. I can't have that around me. I can't have that in my ears. I can't have that in my eye, in my eye gate. Because holy is our God. Your name is holy. You said everyone that name your name, depart from iniquity. They that follow you must not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life, Father. Fill us with that, Father. Fill us with, fill us with righteousness. You said if you hunger and thirst for it, I will fill you. I want that more and more and more and more, Father. Let it be. Let it be. I receive it. I have it. I, I, I receive focus from you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let your kingdom come afresh in me, Father, which is your Holy Spirit of righteousness, peace, and joy, and power, authority, love, and a sound mind. When everybody may be losing their mind, mine is sound because I have your Holy Spirit holding me. Lord, you said peace will be taken from the earth. You said you're going to take peace away from the earth that they may kill one another. Lord, you said you're going to hide yourself and see what their end will be, seeing they don't want you. Lord God, help us. Father, grant with all boldness we may speak the truth in all the words of this life, Lord God. Father, put it on someone's heart to call in and name and with and, and, and not playing games. Father, if there's somebody out there struggling with a scripture or they need prayer, or Lord, they just they're asking a question for somebody else, just let them call in. Let there be no game plan, Lord God. Keep the wrong people away. I believe you to do it, Father. And I know there are some people agreeing with me. Father, you said if two of us shall agree as touching that thing right there or anything we shall ask. It is done of you, Father, which is in heaven. And Father, we don't come on here to be seen and, and, and to be popular. We're just here because you said, go and I will be with you. Who made man's mouth? Who made the, the dumb, the ones who can't talk, the mute? the seeing or the blind have not I you said now go and I will be with you and father you are here you are here Lord Jesus Holy Spirit you are here by your mighty presence and father I even ask that your finger your finger be present the Lord Jesus taught us you taught us if I cast out devils with the finger of Yahweh, so is the kingdom of God come unto you. And you show me that is true the day you told me to go over uh, a family's house. I didn't know what you was going to do there, but you showed up and you taught me that was my finger. You, pr you touched down on that house. And you took care of a lot of, the, of business that was going on. I believe that couple was praying and saying, help us. And you was like, who can we send? Who's in the area? Who will go for us? And you said, ah, oh, Chris, he's fasting. And you said, go over there. I didn't say, why? What's over there? Lord. I pray we, your people, we will be swift to do and not be talking about what time it is. I pray you destroy laziness from us. We are not coming on to appeal to a people and to be cute and to say, ah, don't say that, that that's not be wrong. Father, your word is a hammer and a fire. Speak, do and take over we actually die the people that knew us in the past this is not that person father we die we are dead and our lives is hidden in jesus in you father so it's over it's over and while we got this platform we're gonna speak until they try to take it away 
Because even you said, oh, it's your hour. It's your hour and the power of darkness. And you told us work while it's day because night is coming or will come where no man can work. And Lord, I pray that people won't forget what they heard. Brand it on their consciences, Lord, those that have a conscience. Because you showed us some people's consciences are seared with a hot iron, Lord, cauterized. You can't get in there. They are rejected. They are reprobates. Lord God, I pray if there's a people crying out saying, Give me one more chance, Yahweh. Give me one more chance, Yeshua. Lord, you will respond. Because you said they got to acknowledge the truth. They must acknowledge the truth and you'll grant repentance or not grant repentance. Lord, let your word come bold with boldness. And with fire, Lord God, in all of your servants, Lord, who has your heart, who cares for your sheep and lambs. There are some little ones, Lord. They are searching. Your word says it. There shall be virgins searching. There shall be young men searching. And they're going to faint because the words of the Lord will be few in those days. There will be a famine of hearing of the words of the Lord. Oh, Lord, be here with us, Father. We need you, Lord. Let the flesh be crucified. We are dead. Our lives is hidden in Jesus, in you. We who belong to you have already crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust that's in it. If somebody's flip-flopping back and forth, Lord, help them, Father, to be in one mind as you are in one mind, Lord God. We need you in this regard, Lord God, because you're watching and you're going to give us exactly what, we, what we're what we looking at and lusting after. But we lust for your presence. We lust for your word. We covet. We lust for it, Lord, the best gifts, the all the gifts that we may help another, Lord God. Help the, the orphans. Help those in foster care, Lord, that's even working there, and the children. You said if somebody offend one of those little ones that believe in you, it's a, it's a, a harsh punishment coming on those people. Lord, you didn't say that for no reason. People be, uh, Father, they be talking all the cute prayers the cute messages they post every cute message but not these ones right here what's this talking about lord don't cast us away from your presence oh abba father lord yahweh don't cast us don't cast us away into the furnace don't cast us father and don't take your holy spirit away father please my father i pray people will greatly tremble inside lord i know there's um angels that fell from heaven that looks on human man and says they don't tremble oh they don't know what we know i pray we will learn it and we will speak it and declare it lord let your will be done in us father as it is in heaven it is said that angels and authorities and powers are being made subject unto you right now. And therefore we are subject unto you right now as your ambassadors in the earth, Father. Keep us focused, O Father, and captain of our salvation. Give us this day our daily bread of your word, and also healing and deliverances in these feeble bodies, Lord Father. Healing is the children's bread. We receive it right now. Touch us, Father. It's a benefit of your kingdom. Touch, touch, and touch, touch, touch your people in the name of your son, Lord Jesus, the Nazarene. Touch, Lord. Open the dome, Lord. Open that firmament and shove your mighty arm in, the arm of the Lord, and touch, 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 
all over the planet, Lord God. Grant faith to that one to believe you for that miraculous thing they are wanting. There is nothing too hard for you to do and there's nothing impossible to us who believe you to do it. Thank you, Father, for increasing our faith, Lord God. Thank you for your word, Lord, that wasn't allowed to be choked out by, by the cares of this world or Satan coming to take it. We believe you. Though others don't believe, though they look upon us as a spectacle, Lord God, have your way. I, I take a seat. Become more important. Shine forth. Be magnified, Lord God. In the name of your holy child Jesus, I pray this. Father, to you be all the glory. The kingdom is yours and all power belongs to you. I bless you. In Jesus' name, have your way. I must address you, Father, and will address you. Hear the prayers in my heart that don't come out my mouth, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everyone who agree, amen that prayer, and so be it unto you. Give us a call. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. 270 you can even text us. You can text us if you don't want your voice to be heard on a live broadcast. My wife is standing by uh, watching for text. She just texted the number 270-505-9520. We're in the great state of Kentucky, Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Lord, bless the people of this state, Lord. Bless the governor. May the governor turn to you with all of his heart, with his family, Lord God. Let them start having prayer services, Lord. I bless you. I bless you. So last time, one of my sons called in and he... He asked, he asked some questions. I want you guys to watch that video. We're not going to go back over it. But when I was ending it, he asked about the kingdom of God. What's the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? And I told him the Lord had me putting together a, a, a message about that. The, and, and it's amazing. The Lord knew somebody would ask that question. I believe that's why... He put it in my heart, my spirit, to already start it. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. And I, I titled it, The Difference Between the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Heaven. I don't know if somebody out there wanted to know about that. But I started it out with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 through 38. And this is what it says from the New King James Version. It says, Then comes the end when he, Jesus Christ, delivers the kingdom of God the Father, Yahweh Most High. He, Yahweh, puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he, Jesus, must reign till he meaning Yahweh, has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he, Yahweh Most High, has put all things under his feet. But he, but when he says all things put under him, it is evident that he, Yahweh, who puts all things under him, is accepted. Now, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son, 
Jesus, Yeshua, even the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, Yahweh, I mean Yeshua, that God, Yahweh Most High, may be all in all. That's a powerful scripture. It's a lot to take in. If somebody ever read this and they, they said, what is this talking about? Call in and ask, ask us whatever part you didn't understand. Call in and, 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 and ask us, what is this saying again? Because it's a lot to take in. But what I'm going to just talk it out. The Lord Jesus, he was given a kingdom by the Father, Yahweh Most High. And Yahweh Most High said, I'm going to make all enemies your footstool, meaning his son. That's what's going on here. The son was granted a kingdom. That's called the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven has always been. But let me read some more notes. It says, The Lord, meaning Yahweh Most High, said unto my Lord, Yeshua, his Christ, Sit you at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That's in Psalms 110 verses 1. I always back up what I say. This is what I put in my notes. This scripture describes the kingdom of heaven. Daniel 4.32, which reads, The Most High, Yahweh, continues to rule in the kingdom of men, meaning on earth. And he continues to give it to whomsoever he will. See? The Most High continues to rule in the kingdom of men on earth. And to whosoever he will, he gives it. Nobody can say to him, no, you will not. We're going to put in this position who we want in this position. He was like, he, he'd be like, nope. He is all authority. Now, in Daniel 7, 13 and 14, it shows where he set up that kingdom, the kingdom of his son. He sets it up. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. I'm going to turn to it because I'm just you know, killing time until somebody give, gives us a call. Let's go to that one. Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 and 14. Yeah, this, this ministry won't appeal to everybody because I know we're in the days where people don't want this type of uh, talking to them. They don't want this education we're talking about. They don't want, I'm um, say for lack of better words, this style of ministering. This is this doesn't appeal to them. This is not who they will listen to. And the way I know that is because the Bible told me that. They won't endure sound, wholesome teaching instructions. And, and honestly, we see plainly that the uh, attention span of mankind is very short. They're not going to sit and listen to this. They, they, number one, don't believe. Number two, they have a hatred toward God. 
The Bible says the carnal mind is the extreme hostility against him. And you know what? I, when I learned that once upon a time, I was like, why? Why do we hate him so much when he's a good person? Here this God made the planet, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the water and all the food we could ever eat. And here the thing made, I don't like you. I hate you. I don't want you. What? I don't care for your words. Just leave me alone. Let me have fun. Oh, I can't enjoy myself on the earth? Well, give me Mars. Can I go to Mars and have Mars? Whatever. They are trying to go. They're trying to get off the planet, everybody. There's people living under the water. They're building structures under the water. I can show you scriptures to prove it. They're digging deep under the earth, really deep. The Lord said in that scripture, though you dig into hell, yet I will bring you up out of there. He said, even if you make your home up in the heavens, meaning in, in the, on some planet somewhere, I'm going to bring you back down to earth. So all y'all wasting your money for, you know, all that digging and blasting you're doing. You're wasting your money and your time. And y'all know, whoever I'm talking to, y'all know that he's coming. Because the scripture says it. When, when he comes, the people, they're going to say to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that's sitting on that throne. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who will be able to stand? That's what the Bible says. They knew he was coming. That great day is... Oh, why y'all running from him? <laughs> you cannot win. You're so tiny. And we are all feeble. We're tiny. Why, why do we hate God? Why does the carnal mind hate God? Like, let me go. Let me do what I want to do. Don't nobody tell me what to do. I told the Lord, just have your way in me. If, if I start being a certain way, so be it. I'm this way off, off the camera and on. I mean, I don't get it, but that's just the way it is. There are some people, they don't want this Bible. They don't believe it. They hate you. They hate Yahweh, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. And the Bible says some people, they're going to, when they kill you, they're going to think they're doing God a service, whatever. Okay? We believe in eternal life with him. Everyone else will be in torment in the lake of fire. Listen, everyone. The lake of fire is to be avoided at all cost. Even hell that people say they don't, that they don't want to go to, it's going to go to the lake of fire. Hell will have to be dropped in that lake of fire. It's no game. The Lord God don't send anybody there. He don't want no one to go. Matter of fact, he wants the, the devil and his angels to go because the Bible said it was prepared for the devil and his angels, not for his, his image, his likeness. Us, human beings, the angels were brought forth to serve us, but they envied man. They sinned. That's why the earth is the way it is. They, it, it was a a, a fall, a great casting out, a great fall. And now he, he could have locked them all up. He could have put them just in the lake of fire right then and just scratch that off. But I believe in his infinite wisdom. He showed me I'm going to use this. I'm going to make this foolish man, meaning Satan, a tempter. And therefore that proves life is a test. I asked the Lord, show me the big picture. What's going on? And this is what's going on. That's why he said, overcome it. To him that overcomes, I'm going to give him this. He's going to be my son. 
because the Lord is not going to allow anyone to come up into heaven where he resides just to be cast out again. He just won't do that. So it is hard to get there. You, you must be accounted worthy of that world and eternal life. So let's go back to Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. 7. It says, Daniel said, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. He came with the clouds of heaven. Now, the clouds of heaven is not the billowy vapor you see in the sky. It's basically a numerable host. He came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. That's Yahweh Most High. And they brought him near before him, meaning the clouds. You see, that innumerable host, it says, they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, see, and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, meaning Jesus, Yeshua. Look, it says his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. You see, so if you all ever wanted to know what's the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, this scripture helps to know this is when God set up the kingdom of God. Um, this would be around about the time when uh, Yeshua met Mary in the garden and she thought he was the gardener and he said, ah, don't touch me because I have not yet ascended to my father, right? This would be, if they was, somebody was to make a movie, this would be the next scene of what took place, you know, when he, when that cloud came. Because if you read in the book of Acts, uh, it says, and a cloud received them out of his sight. It was talking about that innumerable host and look, this scripture shows you what took place when they got up there. And they came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Wow. Isn't that amazing to see that? If somebody was to make a movie, that's amazing. Wow. Wow. Okay, in my notes, it says that's when uh, Jehovah Most High set up the kingdom of God. Yahweh has delivered us from the power, authority of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's found in Colossians chapter 1, verses 13. So it proves that the Son has his kingdom. This is uh, our number to the ministry, 270-505-9520. If you all have any questions, you need prayer, you have a question that somebody asked you and you didn't know how to answer them uh, anything. Basically, you, 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 you might probably just need some counsel, encouragement. Give us a call. Phone lines are open. And if this is not a live broadcast where you, you want to call in but we're not live, you can still call leave a voicemail or text message. We will get back with you. Pray for us though, pray for us. We need uh, help as the Lord grows us.
Bless you. <clears throat> you are live. This is the House of Prayer Education Worship Center. How can I help you? Hi, this is your wife. Don't <laughs> I, I knew it was you. I just wanted to practice doing that. <laughs> I'm okay, just so being funny and real. I was kind of praying and just meditating on the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. So could we say that one kingdom you can see and one kingdom you can physically see. The other kingdom you can't see, but only by the spirit. So the kingdom of heaven you can see by the spirit when laid it by the Holy Spirit. But the kingdom of, of heaven, I mean the kingdom of God, is the kingdom that you can physically see with your natural eye. And then we have to live by faith in that kingdom. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes, it's almost like you gave an answer in that question. <laughs> okay, we'll add to it. <laughs> yeah, because when you were talking, I heard a scripture it's like sometimes when people are talking to me, I'll hear a scripture because it talks about um, who only has, let me just read this. And if you're keeping notes, if you're a student of God's word, you're like, I'm hungry. I want to learn. Write down 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses uh, 15 and 16. It says, which in times past, Yahweh, shall show who is the blessed and the only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who only has immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. The, the, the thing I believe the Lord wants me to elaborate on is that nobody can go there, like approach. It says, which no man can approach unto. He dwells in, in a light which no man can approach unto. I'm talking about a human man. You would have to be a spirit. Like you said, Don, spiritually you can go there, but not a regular man. A flesh body humus man. And would you say that because we are spirit, soul, and body, that's one part of it. Then slash, I want to say that because we are a spirit created by our Father who is spirit, that we have to be beckoned by Him. We can't just go there just because we are a spirit. We have to be called to there or invited there has to be some type of invitation and i'm gonna hang up and let you elaborate on it yes it, we 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 would have to be taken there by our god's will it's his will who will go there when you when when i was just listening i heard uh about ezekiel if, did you all know that the Lord God, by the Holy Spirit, the mighty eternal spirit, took him out of his body? On and he, he kept him on earth, but he took him out of his body and said, look, he took him through a wall to these secret chambers and said, look at this son of man, look what they're doing. Uh, he can do that. He still does that. He can take you out of your body and take you places I want to find that uh, I typed in son of man in the uh, concordance but I, I know to look in Ezekiel and that's where I know I'll find it you all get yourselves a good concordance and get a paper back in case the power goes out but you can also get a digital to digital one but let's be students of the Word of God Lord, help me to find this. See, the helper is here. The Holy Spirit is the helper. You all should get, please, 
welcome him into your life. Ask Yahweh Most High for him. The Bible says he will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. But you have to be one that obeyed him. He said he gives the Holy Spirit to them that obey him, meaning you believed on his son and you got water baptized. He gave instruction. Now, if you obeyed him, you are a candidate to receive his Holy Spirit. And all you need to do is ask. He, he's a gift. He said, if we being human beings know how to give good gifts to our kids and we're considered evil, how much more a good father of heaven of glory will give the Holy Spirit to us who, who ask him for the Holy Spirit? You all cannot... Uh, make it out of this life in this Christian walk without having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He's a helper. And it, it's even shown in the book of Acts that they consulted with him. One scripture said, it seemed good unto us and the Holy Spirit that this and this and this should take place. You know, they that 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 means they ask him. And all you got to do is say, Lord, you don't have to say, ah, oh, Holy Spirit or anything like that. You can just simply say, Lord, because the Bible says the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He is the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father and Lord Jesus, because the scripture says we will come unto you and make our home with you. Uh, I'm not finding that scripture, but later I will and put it, when I rebroadcast this for YouTube, I'm going to find it and put it on the screen. But basically, the Most High took that human spirit, because remember the last broadcast, I, I told you all, you're not, you're not uh, um, just a human humus man you are a spirit a guy at work had said hey man I'm only human and I said it's funny you're saying that because I'm writing a book and I just typed that in the book I said look at what humus is I want I want to ask Google I want you guys to hear this humus because humus let me just let Google uh, tell you all Google, what is humus? According to Wikipedia, hummus, also spelled hummus or hummus, is Wait, a of origin, spread. I gotta stop it. It said hummus. <laughs> no, I didn't say hummus. Wait, humus <laughs> is one M, not two M's in humus. So let me just type it. I gotta type it in there. When I talk it in there, she'll talk. I think <laughs> hummus. That's funny. I actually like hummus. Yeah, so I gotta say, what's humus soil? Look at that. Just for the camera, humus is dark organic material that forms in soil when plants and animal matter decays. So that's where they got the word human from because we are humus, humus man, dirt man outer man but you are a spirit please know that when things uh, affect you in this earth realm it's affecting also your spirit and soul not just the body they they're uh, the, the angels that fell from heaven I'm talking we're talking an innumerable host a third of that innumerable fail. It says Satan with his tail 
metaphorically drew a third part of the stars that host they are disembodied they was not given a body the Lord Jesus when he came he said Yahweh a body has has you made for me so I can do your will they don't have a body they are disembodied and the Bible says they roam around wanting to get in our bodies to get rest they need they 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 receive some type of rest when they get in there isn't that something they're to be cast out and then the lord said he gave authority to all of humans you know who believe even little kids was casting them out the lord jesus says by whom do your children cast them out one one disciple said lord them people ain't even following us and and they casting out devils. He's like, we told him to stop. And the Lord says, don't stop him. See how much he want him cast out? Get out of there. You was not granted a body. Get out of there. Yahweh, most high, the loving God. He, it's not that he has love. He is love. He's the source of that. He has delivered us from the authority of darkness. Darkness was given an authority. They were told, this is what you can do. Do not cross that boundary. He delivered us from the authority of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1.13 um, Now back to that question. Don, can you text it to, I know you're like, oh, I got to text all that, but just text the, the, simplify it for me because I'm at a little, I'm detailed. I like to answer a question for the detail of it. I hope I already answered it. Uh, but basically you can be taken to heaven. Paul said, I, I, I was caught up to the third heaven where God is. He said, now, whether in my body or out of my body, I can't tell. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Paul, according to that scripture, no, your body didn't go. This thing did not go there. We just read it. You, you know, the true us is the inner spirit inside of this dirt, this human's house. So most the most high God can grab you up and bring you up there. We, we actually, the Bible says we're already there. We're seated together in heavenly places in Christ. You, you see, that's spiritual. Somebody might ask me, can you clear that up? What, what are you saying? Even the Lord Jesus said, the son of man who is in heaven. He told an earthly man who he was talking about that he was in heaven. I'm like, what? I'm like, only thing I pictured in my mind is that, <laughs> oh, it is scriptural. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says if this earthly house is dissolved, we have a building of God eternal in the heavens that we got to leave out of this one and go into that one. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And one day I actually saw it in the spirit. We're talking to spiritual minded people here, not carnal minded people. The carnal minded people, they're going to say instantly, that guy's crazy. That guy's on drugs or something. Wrong. Now look, one day I was praying or singing or something, and I saw in the spirit that our bodies that's up there waiting for us to get into it, heaven turned and was looking at my body. My That body was singing too. I'm connected. It was like I was connected to it. I don't know how to explain it. 
I just don't know how to explain it. And they're looking at you. They see you. It says you're seated up there. So everybody, ooh, man. I pray nobody misses out on getting in their new body. It's advanced, too. It's advanced. Matter of fact, there was a young man gave his testimony about uh, God pulled him out of his body and just sat him among the judgment, the people that was being judged, literally. He just put them among them just so he can see what it's like. And I know it wasn't a dream. It was a, it was actually happening because the Lord mentioned Facebook to a young lady. And the Bible says it's, it, you know, it's uh, wants to die. It's committed to men wants to die. And after that, the judgment. So once you die... You go straight to the judgment seat, and you gotta you gotta receive the things done in this body, whether it be good or bad. And he's gonna decide whether you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, the kingdom of heaven. And man, the young man said as he went through this portal, he said his hand got bigger, his arm got bigger. You know, he was little and he started transforming instantly. I was like, whoa. I was like, I always knew that. The Lord will always have somebody to start telling their testimony to show me I'm not crazy for what I was getting from him. Wow. Uh, so Don, she just posted Colossians 1.12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. That's more likely the inheritance, the one that I was elaborating on, but it's deeper than that. Let me turn to it. Because the anointing is stirred up in all of us. When, when, when you all are getting uh, scriptures coming to you, that anointing is being stirred up inside of you. The Bible says no man is teaching you. God is teaching you. And he's basically giving you more revelation. It says giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Wow. See, they're in that light that no man can approach unto. Who, it says, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, the authority of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, even the forgiveness of sins, Everybody who's ever listening to this, the Lord forgave you. You're forgiven. It wasn't your fault. The atoms fell. They sinned. Even the animals didn't sin. They didn't sin. That first man and woman sinned. So the Lord came and said, all are forgiven. He told people, you're healed. Your sins are forgiven you. And they was like, who is this forgiving sins? Only body can forgive sins is God. This man is blasp speaking blasphemy. All you need do is just come to him and receive that gift of eternal life, which he put in his son. Now you have to confess him before witnesses. He said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my father and the holy angels. But if you deny me before men, I will deny you before the father and the holy angels. That proves that though you came in, you can be cast out. Because if you reject him, he said, I'm going to reject you. Simple as that. 
people do change their mind, you know. Uh, let's see. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And let me see. Revelations. Revelations eleven fifteen, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, Yahweh Most High, and His Christ, Yeshua. See, He's the Messiah, the Anointed One. Christ is not Jesus' last name. It says, and He shall reign forever and ever. Note, this scripture describes the kingdom of heaven. See, that scripture I just read describes the kingdom of heaven. The Lord Yahweh Most High has prepared his throne in heaven, in the heavens, and his kingdom continues to rule over all. That's Psalms 103.19. See, his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. It rules over all. It can cancel out earth's kingdom. Now, Father said, heaven is my throne and the earth have I given to the children of men. So whatever we allow down here in our house is allowed. That's why we have to pray. Most people say, why do we got to pray? If God knows what's going to happen before it happens, why do we have to pray? Because we got to invoke and call on heaven to come down into our house. He's not just going to come in there. That's why I know to invite the Holy Spirit into a room, into your car, everywhere you go. Because God is not just going to just come in here. This is why Jesus boldly told Pilate, you could have no authority at all against me unless it has been given to you from above. And that's John 19, 11. Because Jesus, the son, knows about the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven rules over all and it can change up things in the kingdom of men. Pilate thought, you know I got authority here? I can release you. He was like, no you can't. If father don't say you can release me, you can't release me. The centurion, there was a centurion who noticed the kingdom of heaven's authority when he told the Lord Jesus, he said, for I also am a man under authority having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my servants, I say, do, do this, and you do that. Matthew 8 and 9. See, he recognized the authority of the kingdom of heaven. He was what I, 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 I could just tell that guy had his eye on the Lord Jesus. Authority figures be watching people. Ah, look at him. He's on, he's got, there's an authority he's operating under. And he said, that's great faith. If you can get that, your faith will excel. Because the Lord says, many like this man is going to come from the north, south, the east, and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. Now, Mark 1.27 says, For with authority, Jesus commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. You see, it says the ancient of days, Yahweh Most High was in Jesus. 
reconciling the world to himself. God was in Christ. And when 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 the most high said you know, command an unclean spirit to do something. Oh, they got to do it. Oh, they will. They won't resist. You can't resist. He commanded the unclean spirits and they obeyed him. And they, in Luke 4, 32, it says, and they were astonished. The people were astonished at his teaching for his word was with authority see Jesus says these words aren't mine but the father see what I'm saying the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of God Luke 5:21 the Pharisees began to reason and say who is this? which continues to speak blasphemies. Who can forgive sins but God, Yahweh Most High alone? You see, that proves he was in Jesus. Jesus said, y'all don't believe that I'm in my Father and my Father is inside of me? Well, then just believe me for this stuff that's happening. It's still happening today in 2023. But people will dismiss it and say, ah, false miracles. It, just because the devil put out his ministers that got caught that they were false. So they'll say everybody false. I told y'all, they just want to prove that we're all false and wrong. Just because a, a few people wasn't good representatives of him. They shouldn't have never went. They were set up to make the gospel to be evil smoke spoken of. The way of truth will be evil spoken of through these people. The way of truth will be evil spoken of through false people. It says, but this is where I put in my notes. But what they fail to realize is that God, Yahweh Most High, was in Christ, the Anointed One, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. See, he didn't say, bring up all their sins. He, just, he forgave them. You're forgiven. You're for, hey, you, you're forgiven. Everybody's forgiven. But he has a, a method. He has what is called his righteous cause. And we got to obey. We, he will see who's going to humble himself under the mighty hand of God. You know, that he might exalt you. Because there's a humbling thing that he does also. Because pride made those ones fall. They fell because of pride. So Yahweh Most High was in his son reconciling the world to himself. Let's be reconciled, you all, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We're to be telling people, be reconciled to God. He forgave you. And I'm saying that in this video. To whoever's listening, your sins has been forgiven you. Let me find the scripture and, and prove it to you. They wrote in John, the book of John, that not just for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Yeah, that's 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, My little children, these things I write unto you that you do not sin. And if any man sin, 
We have an advocate with the Father. We have an intercessor with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. Let's look up that word propitiation. He's the atonement. He appeased God. He is the appeasing of um, the one who appeased God for our sins and not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. You see, that's why we need to go and tell these people, y'all sins been forgiven y'all, but you have to believe number one, that the Bible is the word from God is the word of God from God. Do you believe that? No. <laughs> it's like, how can we go past that? You know what I mean? If you all don't believe that, how can we go past that? Now, if you believe it is, I thought our government believed it because they swear presidents in on it, you know? So if you believe the Bible is the word of God from God, then this is what it says in there. Your sins has all been forgiven you for his name's sake. It's, it, it, look, it is written. So we are Christ, we are his ambassadors. We are Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal as it were through us. We as Christ's personal representatives we beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. That's in the Amplified Version. I just like the way it defines those words. 2 Corinthians 5.20 Be reconciled to God, everybody. Be reconciled to him. You, your sins has been forgiven you. Let me read it again. For he is the appeasing sacrifice for our sins, Jesus. And not only for ours only, but also the sins of the whole entire world, all creation, anybody that could be born. Because one man sinned, you know, Adam with the, the Adams. God called them Adam. Adam named her Eve after the fall. They was the ones that fell. Now he sent his son, which is the last Adam. Your sins has been forgiven you, everybody. <laughs> All you need to do is come receive that free gift. You have to confess Jesus is Lord before witnesses to get married to him. Please come. I beg of you all, come to that marriage. Come get wedded to Christ. All you need to do is say, I believe that. You know, there should be, come on you ministers out there. Do it the right way. Jesus showed us how to do it. He asked Mark, wait, he asked a few people, who do you say I am? And they had to say it. Lazarus uh, sister he said do you believe this and she said I believe you see you have to say something just like when you get married before a judge or a minister you have to say I do and the angel records it and you two are now one and you're not sinning in the eyes of God when you lay in bed together isn't that something those two words made you one and God is pleased, especially when he does it. Let God bring you two together, everybody. I got a testimony. I might have to write a book about it. I might title the book, My Marriage Testimony. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of joking, but I'm not. Give us a call. We would love to hear your voice. This is the time. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be ending the broadcast at 6 o'clock. 
270-505-9520. We're in the beautiful state of Elizabethtown, Kentucky. You can text that number as well. If you don't if you don't want your voice heard over the broadcast. Now, what I was going over is what's the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? For anybody that came in later, and it says we are Christ's ambassadors now. God making us making his appeal as it were through us. That's the word of he committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And we that's what we got to go out telling the people. That's all we need to do just go out and tell them this good news. This one guy I worked with I said, "Did you know the gospel means good news?" He was like, "What good news?" <laughs> That's a good question. What is this good news? You know, keep it simple, everybody. What's this good news? <laughs> Your sins has been forgiven you. And you now have eternal life. Only believe on the Son of God. Believe the Bible is uh, of God, from God. It's God's word. You have to believe that if people can't get past that, that he's that powerful to preserve his written instructions to all his creation and he will not allow it to be totally stamped out. And he says for us to get it in our hearts, you know, get his word inside of you so you won't have to be fumbling around. Where's my Bible? Oh, you know. Don, welcome to the broadcast. Hello again. Um, so, I think my question is, I was thinking about and meditating again on what you pre what the Lord has you preaching about or teaching about. And with, when, when somebody approaches us and they're saying, um, why does God allow all the sin in the earth? Mm. Why are people killing them themselves? Why, why is there so much hate? What's what what's going on? Like, why would this God allow all this crazy stuff? Molestation of children, uh, children are being trafficked and and you know set in houses to be prostitutes at very very horrible young ages. I, I heard about children over in El Salvador being taken from their parents at five and six months and molested at, at that age. Okay, but anyway, what, what do we say to somebody like that? Now, this is what the Lord said to a minister I was watching the other day. I think it was Pastor Isaiah. And he said, the Lord didn't create sin. Sin entered in through Satan. And because a lot of people say, well, why should I serve that God? He ain't doing nothing about what's going on in this world. But what Pastor Isaiah was saying is God came to save you from this world. He sent the Son to save us from what's going on down here. He didn't create sin. Satan created sin. It came through him. He's the father of lies. He allowed deceit and deception to be in his heart. And now that's what he's come to do is to deceive mankind. To cause us to be in this horrible uh, manifestation of sin. And you see it everywhere. You know, sickness, disease, all these things fall under Satan. God did not create this world to be like this. But Satan has caused this. The enemy has done this. I'm going to let you pick it up from there, Chris. 
Yeah. I'm glad you said that last statement. You said an enemy has done this. Let's turn to that scripture. Cause that's that's it's a that scripture answers it. But I'm going to tell you, as I said before earlier, a lot of people just hate God. The Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against God, extreme hostility. Ah! I mean, I'm talking extreme. And it's the, it's the kind where they cover their ears. I don't even want to hear nothing you got to say. Leave me alone. That type of, the Lord got me doing this. If I do anything, he's got me doing this. It's, it's actually amplified. People hate God. How can you get through to somebody when they hate you? That's in James 4 and 4. You adulterers and adulteresses. You know, know you not that the friendship of this world is enmity with God. Let's look up enmity. Hostility. Hatred. So God has a hatred when we become friends with the world. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Life is a test. This is part of my answer. Because life is a test. That's why tell everybody, tell them. If they say why he won't stop this. Why did he allow this? Because life is a test. And he said overcome it. Overcome. Let me find that scripture you mentioned, though. Good seed. That's what I'm typing in my in my concordance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in this parable. The field is the world, the whole entire world as we know it. Some can call it the matrix, the world. And it says in Matthew chapter 13, the king, uh, verse 24 downward, the kingdom of heaven, this is our Lord Jesus Yeshua talking, Lord Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. See, he started out, everything was good. Remember in Genesis, and on this day, God saw that it was good. It was good. The evening and the morning was the first, second, third days and all that, right? But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now, just by reading that, he instantly I heard, why are everybody mad at God? Be mad at the devil. He the one did it, but no, he Mr. Sneaky, Mr. Master of Mischief and Hiding. The wiles and the tricks of the devil, you know, hiding in the dark, doing a little something, running and laughing. He watched this high and nobody attributes nothing to him. When that scripture says, while men slept, his enemy, God's enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Ha <laughs> ha, laughing, you know, knowing he finna disrupt some stuff. 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, 
then appeared to tares also. Now this is talking about the children of God and the children of the devil. The devil came and put his seed among God's good seed people. He put his seed, the, the children of the devil. The, there are scriptures that prove what I'm saying. It says he was the son of Belial, son of the devil. One scripture says Judas, who was of that wicked one. <laughs> that's that's sad. That's sad to be said you're of him. Jesus said you all of <laughs> y'all are of your father the devil. But he came to convert men. Verse 27. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not you sow good seed in your field? Why why does it have tares in it? Why is there the seed of the devil in it? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. And I know he he was like, ah. An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will you then that we go and gather, gather them all up? You want us to wipe them all out? You want us to take all the devil's children out of there right now? Give the word, master. We're going to get them out of there. Look at them. And look what he said. He said, no. No. Unless while you gather up the tares, you root up the wheat with them. You know, you can just see in his parable, he's thinking, hmm. He said, ah, let both of them grow together until the harvest. See, look, even saying that, the Lord has a plan. For us to bring forth fruit, you need them. If everybody's good, how can you be challenged to bring forth a fruit in your life? If that makes sense. Long suffering, right? If somebody was always good to you and life was perfect, you, you won't need no long suffering. Think about it. Let them grow together. Doesn't that give an answer? It, it gave an answer. Tell that person because the creator of this planet said, I got a plan. This is what I'm going to do. Let both of them grow together till the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. He says, as the days of Noah were, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now, you know, a flood came and took them all away. So it's a one was taken, the other one was left, meaning for judgment. One was taken for judgment. I used to think that scripture was talking about the rapture, meaning the good people was taken. No, he said first what? Gather you first the tares. Y'all know what tares are? They're false wheat. They look like us, talk like us, be imitating and uh, being hypocritical. But by their work shall you know them. Just keep watching. What's going on, everybody, when the camera is not on you? What's going on, everybody? When ain't nobody watching, but God says, I see you. What time is it? 531. Look at this. The Lord gave me this today. I believe he gave it for me. He gave this for me, Chris, as basically, now I'm going to give you this. Don't you fall into this, Chris. See, I used to think, oh, Lord, uh, uh, am I doing that now? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, just calm down, son. Because he knows the future, and I pray I don't fall off. 
I pray none of you fall off. All of you servants of the Lord. The Lord says, he, he said, remember the Holy Spirit when he came on Samson in Judges 14. It says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily and he tore apart a young lion as he tore apart a young goat. But also look at verses, uh, chapter 16. The Spirit departed from him. And then Samson awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And going through the motions, the Lord told me. Some people are going through the motions. He said, don't you let that happen to you, Chris. This is what I'm getting from him. See how Samson said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to go out as I did all the other times. It's no problem. Going through the motions. And he knew not. He didn't even know that the Lord had departed from him. And the Philistines grabbed him up and burned his eyes out instantly. And the Lord says, the Holy Spirit announces his entrance, but not his departure. He don't tell you when, he's, when he leaves. He did not know, Samson did not know that the Spirit of God departed from him. This is having the Spirit of Yeshua, the Lord had me write this. This is proof that you got the spirit of my son, Yeshua. It is written. It is written to whom also Jesus Christ presented himself alive after his passion, right? Passion means his suffering. And you know what? Even in suffering, he said, I delight to do your will, O God. And I looked up delight. It means I'm pleased to do with pleasure. I'm moved to. I'm pleased. I take pleasure in doing to do your will. Oh my God. Yes, your law, your word is within my heart. And that showed me right off the rip. We got to get that word in us. If anybody say, I'm doing the will of God, where is the word in you? Psalm 69 and 9 and John 2, 17 says, The zeal of your house has eaten me up. The, that really means the zeal for your house, the house of God, burns in me like a fire, the Lord Jesus said. The zeal, zeal means the jealousy or envy for, the adoration for your house, the adoration that will lead up to anger or jealousy resulting in wrath, in the wrath of God because of, you know, because look what they was doing. They was selling things in the temple. Boy, you can just, ooh, man, if y'all could just see, how, if y'all could see the Lord Jesus back in the day when he came in there and saw what they was doing, I know he was boiling over because that's what that scripture was saying. The zeal. We're to have that. That's the spirit of, the, of, of Yahweh. If anybody say, oh, I got the spirit of God, where is the spirit of God? He said, yet not I, yet not as I will, but as you will, Father. He did say at one point, oh, take this cup for me. He was sweating. Blood was coming out of his uh, sweat vessels. It was strong crying and tears. But yet he said, yet not as I will, but as you will. See? 
Now the Lord said to Chris, he's dealing with me. And if this is bearing witness to somebody, let it be for you. Now I did Google, what does it mean going through the motions? Google said to do something in a perfunctory way. And I had to look that word up. And that means carried out without minimum effort or reflection, not even thinking about it, without any enthusiasm, intense, eager enjoyment or interest, more or most are roused, excited or provoked. See, Samson, that's what he said. Uh, I, I know I got, I'm strong. I'm gonna go out as his other times and shake myself, whatever. Didn't even know the Holy Spirit was gone. And look, 1 Corinthians, this is the last scripture. 1 Corinthians 9, 16 and 17, Amplified Version says, For if I, this is the Apostle Paul talking. He said, For if I merely preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast about. For I am compelled that is absolutely obligated to do it. But woe to me if I do not preach the good news of salvation. For if I do this work of my own free will, then I have a reward. That means if you don't do something out of your own free will, you're not getting a reward. He said, but if it is not of my free will, but by God's choosing, I have been entrusted with a sacred stewardship. That's what the Amplified Version says about that scripture. I'm still eating on that scripture, 1 Corinthians 9, 16, 17. The Lord is talking to me through this. Free will, delight to do it. You got to give up a free will offering. He's watching. We are a living sacrifice. We are the sacrifices now. Not some animal we killed and sliced up and put it on the horns of that altar. And the Lord, when he received the fragrance of that offering, you know, to himself, he knows, ah, he, he accepts it or he rejects it, you know. Even in old times, he accepted or rejected offerings. Now, the Bible says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Lord, help us. I'm going to pray. I'm going to end the broadcast. It's, it's too close to the time to end it to take a phone call. But, oh, Lord, Father, we just come before you and your people unashamed. We are exposed. We are not to be hiding. You told us, put that light on that lampstand. That's what did you say to do. You are not to hide it. Lord God, I pray in saying that you will cause boldness to enter into your people and that they will get into your word, Lord. As the Lord Jesus said, I come to do your will. Your word is in my heart. Let them get into your word and cut off the world, Father. Let them cut it off. I mean everything. Let there be a great repentance and that the people rend their hearts and not their clothes. Lord, I mean, let there be a disgust in some. I know some won't even, they won't be moved by this because it says their conscience is uh, cauterized, seared with a hot iron. They have no conscience. And they don't love you. 
Lord, once you told me I don't love you, and I'm like, I'm determined I'm going to show my love. Enough is enough. All this talk, is, like it says, cheap, Father. If people, you said to them that's forgiven a lot, going to love you the most. And boy, if there's somebody out there listening and the Lord forgave you for many a sins, I mean some down and dirty sins, and, 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 and he forgave you, uh, and, and then you start walking that walk with him, and you was doing good for a while, but you fell again. Lord, those people, and you forgave them again? You granted them to come back as the particle son? Lord, we got to love you the more. We got to show it. Love is an action word. Father, help us, Lord. Let your lambs feast on that word that went out. Let them hear it again, Lord. It's food for the inner man. Lord, Father, give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us from the power of Satan. Lord, your word taught us he blinds the minds of them that don't believe. They don't truly believe unless the light of your glorious gospel who is in your image should shine unto them. Let it shine forth, Lord, in the darkness. Snatch out a many a people, Lord. Translate them, Lord. Shove in your mighty arm, Lord, into this firmament. Touch, O oh Father. Burn out of many a devils in whole houses. As you have done, I saw you do it. Let it be, Father. Those devils are illegal in those bodies. They, they, they shouldn't be there. You can speak the word only, Father. Is there somebody out there believing with me? Believe with me that Father will speak the word and they got to come out and they cannot go back in. Because this is the time. The Lord says many shall be purified, made white, but they're going to be tried and tested and proven. We are in those days. Lord Father, have your way in this world, in whole families, Lord. Let husbands uh, be the true man that they should be for you. Let them gather their families and children and shut the games off. Collect phones. Don't care how mad them kids get. And learn of you before it's too late, Lord. It's sad you got to cause a calamity or the lights to go out or some pestilence. Father, spare us. For the ones that mean business, Father, I pray you gather us all together and, and, and put us in Goshen's all over the place. I really mean that, Lord God. Uh, Abraham said, it's not like you to, to destroy the righteous with the wicked. And you said, if I find so many, I will not. So, Lord Father, I just pray you will just cause a great, um, where people are sojourning, cause them to move. They may not know why they're moving to this state or that state, but... They, they they might not even know most of your people is right there in that area. They just might have thought, oh, it's just said, to me, Lord, let there be Goshen's because you told us don't pray for world peace and all that stuff. You said pray that you will be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. That's what you said. Because it surely will come. So Father. Be gracious unto us. We come boldly before your throne of grace. Asking for more grace. Because sin is abounding Father. And you said where sin does abound. Your grace will much more come into us. I pray, Lord, 
false teachings will be exposed and let the truth shine forth, Lord. May we be in resemblance to your dear son, that's your will, and be born again. This I humbly ask in the name of your holy child, Lord Jesus. I won't stop praying all day. But anybody out there that agrees with me, amen this prayer and so be it unto you and all the countless innocents that will benefit from it. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute, I got one more. I got one more. Agree with me that the Lord will cause a tornado to tear down all the factories that's trying to produce these uh, uh, what is it called where they're putting the uh, pesticides inside of seeds they're trying to put uh, stuff inside of our food agree with me people that our God would tear down those places they're tampering with his seed. They're trying to kill us. You all must be educated in how to pray over your food. The word of God says your food is sanctified by his word. What word are you applying to your food? I have a perfect scripture. It says, and you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and keep sickness from the midst of you. See, apply that to your food and give thanks and it is sanctified. This is just a small taste of the House of Prayer Education and Worship Center. We believe in education. Let's not do anything ignorantly anymore. Everyone we love you. We're not just saying it. We mean it. You all have a blessed day, a blessed week, a blessed month, and a blessed year. I mean, may the Lord keep your families, all those innocent babies out there. They're dependent on you parents. Young ladies, young men, don't turn aside to Satan. Leave him. The Lord says everybody that follows him must not walk in any darkness, but will have the light of life. I pray we all make it. This is your brother, Brother Chris, signing off on this Thursday of June, I believe it's the 8th, 2023. You all be blessed till next time. Shalom.